you know it would be great if I was an online bank executive and I could further reduce fraud while at the same time not impacting the all-important customer experience. And what would also be pretty cool is if I knew that the bank had intelligent software that was able to monitor in real time how I interacted with my device and picked out my unique usage patterns to identify me. Well, this software does exist and it's in production. It's provided by Behaviosec. Behaviosec is a tech company that transforms your user behavior into another layer of security. See, they calculate a score that's fed into a risk engine. If the score is high, they open up their arms wide and let you comfortably in. If the score is not high, what happens is you go through some additional security tolls. Their solution helps banks protect against account takeover and ID theft. And since expenses are pretty damn important to Wall Street, it's also important to note that they're able to cut costs from undetected losses and usage churn. User churn. Credibility? Well, they call every Swedish bank a customer, and they secure over 4 billion transactions annually. See how I emphasize that? Yeah. 4 billion. <laughs> so it's my pleasure to introduce all of Renberg, who is the Chief Operating Officer and Co-Founder. Thank you. Wow, Neil. That's like uh, half my presentation. <laughs> Thanks for stealing all my thunder. Uh, so the fraud levels in the US has risen by 16% year on year since the last year. Uh, it now targets around 6% of the American people. And the reason for that is that we, as humans, are lazy. I mean, we all know it. We use the same passwords, we write them up, because we're introducing too many complex security software and, and uh, tools out there. What the Accenture is trying to do is to identify that it's actually you coming into that service, and you provide something to them, saying, hey, this is actually me, right? We think that there is a shift in this, coming from the old way, yes or no, based on the information that you provide. You should be able, like Neil uh, really did a good job of presenting it, should present a good risk that it's actually the right user or not, based on what we know about this person from how they're behaving or how they're interacting. And our way of doing this is something called behavioral biometrics. And that is taking the way that users interact with a device and we will know if it's the right person or not, based on the psychological and the physiological behavior. We turn that into a biometric template. So think of the way that you type, how long you hold down a key, you release and go to the next one. That's the sort of information we capture. Or on a mouse movement, how much do you diverge up and down from a straight line? On a touch-based device, such as a mobile phone, we will also capture how hard on buttons you press, and where on the buttons you press, using gyroscope and accelerometer readings to augment the data. And it's not just about how you type your password, <coughs> because we all know that you use password as password, but it's also the backwards S, for example, used by 84% of the people to unlock your phone. You can monitor how <laughs> fast you go around the corners, how hard you press when you do that. So you can see the difference between different users when they're trying to access. So like Neil uh, introduced us to, we are in production already in a lot of banks, mainly in Europe. Uh, we also are working with some of the leading payment providers to also provide this into your credit card transaction. Wouldn't that be great that the actual, when you punch in the credit card information, it wouldn't block your card or it wouldn't ask for additional authentication because it wouldn't know that it's you based on how you're doing it. And also working with Barbara, uh, sorry, not Barbara herself, but Barbara's old <laughs> colleagues back in, in DC to implement this in the handset and in for government security as well. So as you can see on the map, uh, we started up in the far north of Sweden, where it's very dark. It's not much to do than to write good algorithms and artificial intelligence. <laughs> it kind of spread out from there on all the users across the Nordic countries, so into Western Europe, all the well from Belgium down to Italy. We have top banks using it in Europe. Right now, uh, we're, we, we secure around 35 million end users, uh, and we're hoping, that, of course, that there will be more here in the US. And the reason that they're buying is 
means to detect fraud. And the way that we do that is that we'll supply, like Neil said, he did a really good way of doing it, in real time. We know it's the right person or not, and you will get a score showing that if there's something wrong with this transaction, maybe you should look more into that. So we're essentially augmenting the data or, and empowering the, the fraud analysts at these banks. And it's not just about detecting fraud. It can also reduce the way that they have to call up customers saying that, hey, is it actually you that did that transaction? They will actually know now if it was the right person or not. And we can also then mitigate the use of strong authentication or uh, step up authentication. So we work with some of the leading authentication providers in the world to, if the behavior actually looks wrong, maybe now it's the time to bring up that token or do that out of bound transaction. And like I say, it's not just when you're on your online bank or using your mobile bank, which is the main reason that we're here today, but it's also been put into the operating system to protect operatives like in the US government, like I said. We work with the US Defense, DARPA, the creators of internet and GPS, to put this into a mobile phone so we know it's the right operative using that phone all the time, not just when they're actually using a specific app or not. And we talk to some of the leading handset producers that this could be implemented into every phone that is used today. Like I say, we're very strong in, in, in Europe, but right now what we're focusing on is trying to raise capital to bring it over here. I want to thank Maria and those for bringing us over here and getting the chance to pitch to all these great American banks that are here, and hopefully they will be as receptive as the European banks in the program that already bought the technology. So thank you for that.